Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Hey, wedding season is just about here, and she is probably the most important part of your wedding, but a lot of times people don't realize that. They don't focus on the ceremony. It's all about the venue, the food, the gown, you know, the DJ, all important, but it starts at the ceremony, and Colleen and company do some great ceremonies, plan things out for you. She is an amazing officiant, and Colleen Dwyer is back with us on the program. Hey, Colleen, how you doing? Good. How are you today, Steve? I'm well. I'm well. I figured today we could take people through the process, how it all works when you meet a couple. I think one of the the biggest aversions, if you will, is the the vows, trying to figure out how to write them, how they're done. You still want them to be personal, but you also want them to be you know, traditional at the same time. Could we do that? Sure. I'd love to talk about that. Excellent. So first of all, when a couple's interested in booking with me, I like to schedule a call. And we sometimes do that either over the phone or we do Zoom. Um, I think Zoom is great because you get that vibe check and you catch people in their more relaxed environment. Um, so that it, at that time, I explained the whole process of how people book and what we do. And what we typically do is after they've booked, we send out a questionnaire so I can get to know the, the couple and understand their whole ceremony, um, you know, theme or vibe and, you know, what they're doing, who's included in the, the ceremony, who's going to be in the processional, what are their wedding party, et cetera. But uh, one of the things I really love, and in fact, I'm considering a book because I get so many interesting uh, responses from each couple is that I give them a questionnaire about their background as a couple, how they met. Uh, what were their first impressions, um, and then how they got engaged, and how did they know that partner was the one? So let's have some fun with this, and maybe I can ask you, and you can just make up random responses as though sure. I'm asking you as the groom. So, um, and let me assume- let me preface all of this by saying that uh, I'm dating somebody not a very long time, but we we even joked about a wedding. Not gonna happen. Anytime soon, like anytime soon, but we've already picked out a wedding <laughs> song. Uh, you know, we talk about it, we joke about it, um, and it's kind of fun. So I can use the relationship specifics and plug them into whatever you're going to ask me. That would be great. It's always much better too if you can, you can like you have something in your head and in your sure. memory bank. So, yeah. so first of all, like because it's so new, my first question would be, how long have you two known each other? Um, hmm, let's see. Uh, <laughs> eight months. <laughs> eight months. Yeah. So that's kind of. I meant, um, I meant uh, eight years, eight years. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but that's true. That's how it, it kind of works with me. Sometimes people have met when they were much younger sure. and they did not have, they had a platonic relationship where they were acquaintances and then they're they started dating much later. So when I ask how long they've known each other, then I need to kind of get into how did you first meet? What was your first date? So uh, many times I get two answers there. So they might've met while they were in college and they were all part of the same friends group. And then, um, then they were at a graduation party and people were kind of all there as couples. So they were kind of competing together in cornhole and then they went out on a date so the next question is tell me about your first date like did, how did you meet did you meet online were you introduced by other people met online and the first time we actually met it was a in the summertime cold kind of a with definitely a rainy night a little on the chilly side at a restaurant called restigios and we met late and the place is pretty much closing up we we're the only people there <laughs> and uh uh, I think we both had a coconut martini. Uh-huh. Sounds delicious. But yeah. so that's cool. I love how you told me it was a rainy night and you met at a restaurant and it was kind of late. Um, it's interesting. My fiance and I kind of met at a, a local restaurant too. And because of the pandemic, all of these places were closing earlier than they used to. So I was under the impression it was going to be open later and we show up and before we know it, we're being kicked out. 
and we were having so much fun. We wanted to keep talking, but you know, that's your first date. So you don't know what to do in pandemic. We had a lot of things shut down. So tell me a little bit about what did you guys, how was that first meeting? Did you feel really good connection there? Instantly. Yay. And we had to leave the restaurant. So we actually went to my car and just talked a little bit more. Right. And that's very cool. And that's kind of a, a good uh, idea for me. It's that you met and you got to know each other fairly quickly. Uh, and there was an instant connection. Like there was an ease in your conversation. Things went back and forth without, you know, any hitches. And it helps me to dial into that. You know, some couples, they don't like each other at first. And there was a little friction and it was kind mm -hmm. of things grew. So it helps me to dial into how to explain the way that the arc of your love story. Okay. Yeah. And everybody so, the thing, you know, and I'm glad that you realize that everybody has a story. Yes. Everybody and that's the thing. Story. It's like, and every single love story is different. It's uniquely woven and crystallized by the two of you alone, you know, and nobody mm -hmm. will ever have the same experience that the two of you had, which is what I love so much about hearing these things. So um, what was your first impression of her? Like when you first met her, especially since it was online, did her photos match her pictures online? And, you know, did she match up with the girl you were chatting with? Was she shy suddenly? That kind of stuff. Um, Her smile immediately, uh -huh. you know, that was it. But I already knew that from the pictures. Her pictures were her. She had a Calvin Klein sweatshirt on, white sweatshirt with black uh, letters and <laughs> Side note, the other day she was actually cleaning and was about to throw the sweatshirt out. I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. You're not, I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> she actually sprayed it with perfume and gave it to me the other day. Oh, it'll be it. your pillowcase. <laughs> Pretty much so. <laughs> yeah. That's, see, that's a cool, that's a cool thing to know, you know, for me as an officiant that she was about to throw it away, but that was that first sweatshirt and you still keep it, you know, yeah. with it and still has her scent on it. So that too would be a great thing if you were going to do your own vows to write in your vows that, you know, mm -hmm. I still have that sweatshirt you were wearing on the first date. Um, so uh, has she ever told you what her first impression of you was? Um, no, God, let me text her. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. No. But the, the one thing was, a, um, the one thing, common theme was we would talk for hours on the phone after that even late at night as a song by harry styles um it came out like i don't know maybe less than a year ago called late night talking so whenever it comes on we kind of joke about yeah. it and a kind of running joke still forever is she has a very new york accent so uh -huh. she says certain <laughs> words i you know i call her out on it just to joke around about it like sure. it, it's you know, the cardiologist, <laughs> <laughs> we have a, we have a grocery store called me farms. So it's me farms. And uh, <laughs> that's, that's it. You know, every once in a while I hear something and I'm like, what'd you say? Where are you going? <laughs> me farms. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> you know, that I would think that even something, because that is a common theme for us, that could even be woven into the, <laughs> the vows in some way. Cause it's, it's audible. Yep, exactly. That's really fun. Um, so I, you know, saying that too, speaking of accents, accents have, you have such strong memories of someone's voice, you know, and you have such strong memories of their accent. Yep. It becomes something that is just like your comfort sounds, right? Because you get so used to that person's voice. Yep. And uh, we were, I had a wedding just this past weekend and the couple, the, the gentleman was really very good at writing some of his impressions of his girlfriend or his fiance. And he said that if she gets a drink in her, she starts bringing out this Brooklyn accent and talking all big. And the girl is so soft-spoken normally. It was a total uh, side to her that I did not see. So it was great to hear him reveal that because it helped me see that there's this like soft-spoken, quiet young lady. And then when a drink gets in her, she becomes somebody else and he gets to see both sides of it and have fun with those sides. Yeah, of it. that's cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, so how did you know that she was the one? What would you say? Now, I know that you feel comfortable goofing about this, so you might have to make something up here, but. Um, 
just the way she makes me feel, you know, you yeah. feel happy. And, and to your point, um, I'm very big on audio, audible voices and all of that. And we both say to each other all the time, you know, I love your voice. I love your voice too. Side note, um, she's a little bit younger than me and used to listen to me on the radio. I still do radio. I've been doing it since I was 17. So it's just like, it's almost weird than when we first met, like, I feel like I'm listening to the radio. <laughs> yeah. It, you know, that's what uh, she remembers. That's what she right. remembers. It's a memory. It's a familiar memory. So she probably felt very comfortable and familiar with you right away. That's really um, cool. Pretty much so. That's kind of what she said. Yeah. It's like, I knew you, but I didn't know you. Right. That's interesting. So what is your favorite characteristic about her? Um... Her laugh. Oh, so yeah. you've got the smile, the laugh. And what was it about her profile that drew you into her? Uh, definitely the smile. The yeah. smile. It, yeah, it, that, I guess that's part of the profile, but in terms of the, you know, the text, um, to be honest with you, I won't go into detail, but I didn't read the text deeply. <laughs> It just, you know, oh, really? yeah, it was her smile that did it. And, uh, and then just, you know, looking yep. at the pictures and she just looked like she was fun. And, um, and a situation came up that, uh, I, I'm not even worth going into detail that I didn't read the uh, <laughs> specifics and it, it didn't present a problem, but it was actually kind of funny how it all turned out, but it was because I didn't read it carefully. I didn't read it carefully. Right. Right. Yep. Well, in, in my oh. case, I'll just throw that out there too, because I met my fiance online okay. and he had this, the most bizarre uh, profile picture. He had a, a flag bandana around his neck and sunglasses on and his hair was just wild. And he had this like growth of beard that was sort of spotty. It was not like a regular beard. And I saw that, you know, the note came in, I saw his photos pop up. And the first thing I went was ha, like shocked, you know, who is this guy? But then I looked at his profile, read it, and he was well-written and he had other photos that were not that crazy look. And he said he put it out there to see if anybody would read his profile. So he kind of did a, a reverse. He wanted to see mm -hmm. if somebody was, you know, going to go into the you know, look further and get to know him better. And so I saw that he was former military and some other things that just was like, who is this guy? Because he's presenting so many different facets to his personality. Um, was so, was he um, you expected after you guys met? Oh yeah, he's definitely uh, crazy. Um, he's got, he, he's very, like he's a mechanical engineer. So there's a brain side of him that is so different that's focused and uh, detailed. And then there's this other side of him that is just a goofball and you almost can't get him to get serious. You know, he's a, he's got this other side to him that is um, sometimes frustrating because it's hard for him to be serious, but he, he's a, uh, he's fun. He's always keeping things interesting. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, what would you say, um, what is her strengths? Like as a couple, you know, you each have your own strengths that you bring to a relationship. But when, when you meet somebody, you often look for somebody that has complementary strengths. So what strengths does she have that complement you? You know, it could be that she's really great at picking out restaurants, you know, or she is a little bit more organized than me. So she keeps me on track. What are her complementary um, uh, strengths? Hmm. Um, looking at the funny side of things okay and and also she's like me in that you know i say i'm a big kid you know <laughs> very responsible and all of that um but we could be driving and and you know you hear a word somebody says something and the word is just funny and we just look at each other like Burr. and <laughs> i had a reunion with my friends that i went to school with she came along just a, you know a couple of guys and then you know one of their girlfriends and you know, the whole night, it was just like 12 year old jokes, but oh. she, she was rolling with them too. Yeah. <laughs> she you know, fits right in. Yeah. There's no, it doesn't get like too deeply serious unless there's a reason for it to be, you know, kind sure. of like lighter, sure. lighter side. Yep. 
So you guys have very similar sense of humor too. And that's so important. Humor is what makes your life uh, worth living. I think, you know, love is important. It is, but you got to have somehow a way to bounce through like other times and just enjoy life. And if you have a good sense of humor, it's easy to do that. So, and and this could even be included in the vows. It's a, it's my thing. If I drink a certain type of beer, love beer, I'm, you know, crap beer guy. I sneeze like repeatedly, <laughs> like, like, like I could go 14 in a row, like, and it's a, <laughs> a loud sneeze. And, you know, sometimes I've even sent her a clip of me sneezing and it, that makes her laugh. So this morning she texts me a picture of, uh, I guess she was in the store and it's, Hop Blast IPA. So anything hoppy makes me sneeze. Now, this is like, you know, TNT hop IPA beer. And she, <laughs> of it, and she wrote, you'd be sneezing for 24 hours straight, LOL. Oh, uh, right. you know, um, yep. it's, you know, things like that. That happened uh, last Friday night. We were coming yeah. back, you know, from um, a dinner with uh -huh. uh, another couple. And uh, all, oh, she handed me a mint that came off, you know, the plate wrapped mint at the restaurant. Yeah. And peppermint does it too. So as I'm driving, you know, <laughs> last about 12 sneezes in a row. So oh. maybe yeah, that might be something to put in <laughs> right? because it's real, you know, and I can't control it. If it's the right thing, it just sets me off. <laughs> well, that's what I call those Easter eggs that you kind of bury in your vows mm -hmm. sometimes that you, the two of you have a special under, understanding of, you know, and, um, and other, other people may not even know, but it's not going to be too off the wall either. And it's, it's what kind of brings you into the moment a little bit more. So uh, that's pretty cool. And it would be something that would be great to like weave into the script. Um, what do you, what would you say is her superpower? See now, I think this is hard because you've already answered some superpowers. So now you'd have to come up with some other ones. Mm, I really have to think about that. Ah, that's that's that is a tough one um hmm she is really great at analyzing a situation that's good reading the room and analyzing a situation yeah so. like a problem presents itself and you may think that you know somebody else is not really listening clearly um but you know there'll be a, a slight pause and then she'll you know give a different view of it and it's an interesting one um, sometimes comes out of nowhere. So yeah. Uh -huh. That's really good. Um, so how has she impacted you in a good way? Like what, since you've been dating, what do you feel that you're enjoying in life more that you did before? Um, looking forward to talking with somebody, even okay. if we, we don't see each other uh, for a couple of days, you know, we still talk at night, you know, for yeah. like an hour. Yeah. It's almost, <clears throat> it's almost hard getting off the phone. Oh, so you tuck each other in bed while you're on the phone, huh? <laughs> I guess so. And then it's yeah. like a running joke, the Irish goodbye. I don't know if you yeah. know. Yeah. It's just like, I can buy click. <laughs> <Did that. laughs> no more Irish goodbyes. So now it's in, it's, she's Italian. So now it's an Italian goodbye. So it takes forever. Uh, yeah. yeah. That's funny. I like that. Um, and so what are some things that you have like done together since you've met that are like that you've experienced, overcome or celebrated together? I would say in, you know, as you mentioned, um, that reunion, it was sort of like a good thing to take her to, to see how she mixed in with some of your oldest friends. Mm -hmm. But like, what are some things that the two of you have done together that makes you feel that this has, this relationship has potential? Um, we went on a hike mm -hmm. and I, I put that in air quotes because she had never done a hike, doesn't know what a hike is. And I'm like, all we're going to go is like, we're going to the woods and we're going to walk around. <laughs> and we did. And, and, and actually I had like an hour and a half in between work and she goes, wow, this is hiking. I'm like, yeah, you just walk around. Well, how do we get out of here? I said, it's only one square mile. Don't worry. We're, we're getting out of <laughs> the cars. Um, but we still have the pictures from that. And probably the biggest, we went to a Queen tribute show. It was our first big date. Oh, uh, gosh, that sounds fun. And there's a lot There's a lot of stuff surrounding that, you know, things mm -hmm. that took place. And um, so that, 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 
that was kind of a big deal. You guys have a lot of musical interests that you share too. Right? Yeah. And it's also a running joke again, because I'm a little bit older than her. So I, and I'm very much into music. So I have, I know songs that she might not know. Um, and then she'll joke, you know, how could you even listen to that? Like we have a running joke last couple of weeks, Steely Dan. I don't yeah. worship Steely Dan, but I kind of like them. Right. And she will, she's like, oh, I can't, I can't get it. Uh, it, it like, <laughs> I don't even know. So I've actually even done a, a dedication on the air because I'm on a station that plays a lot of classic hits and dedicated a Steely Dan song. To there her. you go. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> Center That's, to the see? That's another one of those little things that, you know, you'll love it forever. Like even if she, yeah, even if she doesn't listen to Steely Dan or yeah. she doesn't appreciate him. So, but we both um, Def Leppard and uh, we joke around that Def Leppard uh, Hysteria will be the wedding song. There you go. I love that. Hysteria. You imagine your parents coming out and dancing <laughs> to Hysteria. They will, though, if it's a wedding. So you can they have get, to. Yeah, you can get them to do anything. Right. So what um what is a quirky habit that she has that uh you find amusing overthinking overthinking yeah and it, it, right out of the gate her name is tina so i would i, I would say up oh, you're doing an ott, uh, OTT overthinking, overthinking tina, tina. <laughs> right. there you go so you got another one you could write you could do this right now your vow so ott um so when you think about your favorite memory so far, if you just closed your eyes and reflected back, what's your favorite memory? What would it be? Hmm. You know, um, probably the the Queen concert, the tribute show was, you know, had a just a slight air of awkwardness because it was the first big date. Um I would say right after that, soon after that, we went to a cider house and that was kind of fun. Yeah. And I know that she was nervous, you know, uh -huh. till, you know, it, it, you know, she was a little anxious about it all. And, and, and it was great. Um, That's awesome. I remember that I could even tell you that, you know, the, the shirt I was wearing and um, yeah, that was, that was fun. That's awesome. So those are the kind of things I get from couples so that I can <laughs> get to know them. And it's really good to get both sides sometimes, especially if both people are participating either in the call or the, the, um, they, they write out their responses to me sometimes too, and they feed off of each other, which creates this energy that I'm able to watch and uh, absorb. And it gives me such a great idea of really who they are as a couple and, um, how to approach their ceremony. You know, you two seem to um, have inside jokes and you find the light side of things. So you'd have a very lighthearted, funny, sometimes tongue in cheek um, things that you would do in the ceremony that, um, you know, I'd have the responsibility of sort of tuning your guests into it, but we would let you kind of have that fun together. And I would sort of find a way to officiate and, and pull those things out of you. Um, which I love. And I don't know any other officiants that do that. I mean, some may say, well, it's the vows. How, you know, okay. So we'll make it a little personal, whatever. But no, when you take it and you explode it up and you really right. dissect it, there can be a lot of fun and oh, yeah. memorable fun in that instead of just your, I hate to say, do you blank, take blank. It's just right. you know, after a while, uh, it it's not fun anymore. No. But, you know, for me, I would need you to reel it back because maybe there would be too much silliness in it. You know, right. you know where, where where's our comfortable spot there where it still has a traditional feel, but there's a little bit of fun, uh, sort of like the, the frame around it is a fun right. frame, but the, the picture is, you know, something traditional and, and, and meaningful. And that's kind of interesting that you said that because I try to follow a standard um flow of the ceremony you know you in you uh welcome the guests and you know you acknowledge special people and then are we running out of time we're so funny we're having right. such a good time <laughs> I just, I, and i'm looking I'm like how did that even happen <laughs> yeah. but we have so much more time in the future to speak so i'll have a lot of fun with that so. yeah and and um i wondered where this was going to go today but i'm hearing 
Am I getting married anytime soon? I'm the example today, but I'm hearing what it could sound like and also detecting how important the ceremony is. I knew it was, but even more right. so when you add those personal touches, it's almost like writing a script to a show. Right. Where, you know, it like call, call it a friends episode and it's a sitcom. And it's not, yep. not, all, not all wedding ceremonies have to be funny, but if they're real and relatable and you know, what was friends when you look at it, right. it wasn't like a ha 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 every single time, but you know, when they're trying to carry a couch up the stairs, we've all tried to do that. And what do you think of pivot, 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 you know, move yep. it. Yep. Um, it's just a relatable experience as is, you know, everything else. So um, yeah, right. <laughs> I love, I love the way you, you view things. Yeah, I have so much fun. It's it's very it's easy to be passionate about each person's story. And that's what I think that a good celebrant or a good officiant would bring to your ceremony. Yeah. Is that they're passionate about your story so they can share it with the same care, tenderness, lightheartedness, joyfulness that you would want to have on your yeah. day. And and you know, Colleen, here's the difference. You're aware of the whole situation because you've spoke with one or both you know, the couple, um, you're not just getting a piece of paper and reading the vows. You're telling the vows. You're telling mm -hmm. the story. That's right. the game changer. That is the complete difference. And that's what makes a ceremony special. Right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, it's been great talking to you again today. And I'm sorry we didn't have enough time, but maybe I'll tell you what your script is next time. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you know, that'd be fantastic. And I'm gonna I'm gonna, you know, text her and say, um, what are the qualities you're like? I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let that me put you on the hear. spot. Uh, how do we reach you, Colleen? You can uh just I always recommend Googling because I believe that that's easier for everybody. So it's efficient services by Colleen and Company. And I'm located in York, Pennsylvania. If you place that in your Google or search engine, any kind of search engine. The other way is you can give us a call. Our phone number is 717-318-4383. And that's everything. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> well, thank you. Great talking with you. Nice uh, being part of the process and look forward next time we talk. All right. Thank you. Bye now. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcast on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit HFOTUSA.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's it's going to be okay.